So now let's look a little bit more at another type of light in Arnold um, called a sky dome light. And so I'll select my area lights and I'll just make sure their intensity is set to zero. So when I do a render, there's nothing showing up. So we can go to Arnold lights, sky dome light. Now you'll notice there are other types of lights in here. But these are the two that you'll use the most. Maybe a mesh light if you want an object to cast a light. Uh, but anyway, let's look at this guy dome light for now. So we turn this on. And let me go into, I'm in my perspective view. So if we just back way out of the scene. You can see that this light is what it says on the box. It's a dome light. It's actually a spherical light that surrounds the scene and it casts light in all directions. It also casts shadows, so we get light that dies off in these areas where there are surfaces in close approximation to each other. So um, we get nice, it's like a cloudy day sort of light where you get a, a broad diffuse light. So this is a nice way to light your scene quickly and put light everywhere in it. Um, you can see that this works a little differently. The exposure is set to zero, the intensity is set to one. You start dialing up the exposure, it's going to get really bright. So even at zero, we get lighting uh, that works for us. Um, it works in the same way, samples. Now, you can see it's pretty low quality light right now. My whole render setup is a bit low quality, so I'm just going to turn up a couple of settings right now. I was playing around with something. We'll come back to this in the next video. I'm just going to turn up, oh that's too much, just turn up my overall quality. That makes it better, but it takes a little bit too long to render for me. So anyway, still going to be some noise in the bounce light here, but you can see this is a little bit better. So we can take a picture of this, and we can turn up the samples here see if there's an appreciable difference. I think it'll be harder to see. Yeah, there's not a big difference when you change the samples here because the samples here have to do with the way it casts shadows, but um, because the light is coming from all directions, it has more to do with the bounce diffuse light. So this noise that we see um, in here has to do with noise from poor sampling in the bounce diffuse. So we'll look at that in the next video. Um, but let's see what else we can do with this um, sky dome light. Everything else works really in the same way. We've got all the visibility settings. So, you know, we can turn it down diffuse. It doesn't light anything and diffuse anymore. We can turn off its visibility. So the light itself isn't rendered, so that's what camera means, so the light itself does not appear in the render. And this will become more important in a minute. So at any rate, um, this is uh, a great light just for adding light to your scene, filling in shadows, and you can use this, all, of course, in combination with area lights, and we can turn the intensity down if we want to just have some light cast into the scene. It's going to put it back at one right now. But another thing you can do with these lights, and now this is different if you're using a slightly older version of Arnold, um, and we'll look at that in a second, but if you want to put an image in this light, you can use that image to light the scene. And what you typically use for something like this is called an HDR image, or a high dynamic range image, and you can download these from different places on the internet. Uh, I've provided you with one if you're in my class uh, <laughs> to work with here. Um, and we can put this in the color channel. Now, just so you know, in the past to do this, you could do it in the light, but in the past, and you might see reference to this in the render settings, and we'll come back to this later on, under environment, you could put a background in the scene. If we clicked on this, you could create a sky shader. You'll notice now that it says background legacy because this is the way that Arnold used to work and you can actually still do it 
but the intent now is for you to use uh, the sky dome light and to put the HDR image in the color channel here. So I've got a, co a couple of HDR images already. So I'm just going to click on the checkerboard beside the sky dome light color. And to place a file in here, you can either use a Maya 2D texture file or you can go to Arnold Texture AI Image. I'll just use that. Click on the browsing icon and it should, if you set this up properly, and I thought I did, it should take you to your textures folder. And so you can see what this is. It's a picture taken in a scene, and this is a cathedral, um, with a, a, re, a purely reflective ball. So it's, it's a camera taking a picture of a, a ball that's uh, reflecting the entire scene. Um, and the other thing that it does is that it takes multiple exposures. So you can change the exposure of this image on the fly and it will either blow out the white, the, the brightest parts um, or it will add detail to the brightest parts while making the darker parts darker um, or you'll see detail in the darker parts but it will change the way the brightest parts come out. So um, it's a great way to light a scene and cast interesting complex colors into a scene. I've got a couple here like Alex's apartment it's the guy who made this um, let's use the cathedral though and you'll notice that I've got HDR images here in the folder and then I've also got the same thing but it's dot TX um, Arnold when you give it an HDR when you give it any type of texture file it wants to convert it to its own format called dot TX and this has already been converted but for now I'll, I'll still give it the HDR image, but it will just convert this, and you'll see a little progress bar going probably. If I start this up again, no, okay, we didn't see it, but there was a little. It probably didn't have to convert because it found one in the scene already. So this looks horrible. So one thing you have to do with HDR images that I just learned is to go to the AI image and change its color space from sRGB to RAW. It says this in the Arnold help files. And so it changes this, still doesn't look good, but if we go into the light settings now, we can start turning down the intensity. Okay, so that's better. So we've got a low intensity. It's kind of hard to see, but we can start turning up the exposure or the intensity. So I set the exposure up to one. We've been dialed this up a bit. That's getting a little too flat lit. But you can see really interesting stuff happening here. So this is the only light in my scene right now. And if I can just zoom in here, oops, zoom in here a bit. So I'm going to render this at a higher resolution so we can see. I'm just rendering at 500 and by 540, so I'm just going to change this to say 1k square. So take a little hard, longer to render, but we can see a bit more detail. So look at what's happening here. You can see multiple shadows, right? So there's a dark cast shadow being cast from his arm onto his leg, and then a lighter cast shadow that's being filled in with other lights and you can see some of that subtlety here some of that subtlety here why is that happening well it's reading this image in such a way where there's a big bright light source like the stained glass window here or maybe there's another window up here that's casting light it's using that as a light source and if there's another one it will also use that as a light source so you get uh, lights from multiple directions you still get cast shadows um, and you can see you get this sort of rich color that's sampled from all around the scene. So even though this shader is just gray, it's got this sort of rich orangey color because of what's being sampled from the environment. So let me just go into that camera for a second. So if I just pull back here a little bit. Don't crash. Don't crash, don't crash. 
Okay, it's threatening to crash, so I'm going to save my scene. Let me just hide the floor. Just so you can see. But you can see how it really seems to fit into this environment uh, because of the color that's being cast. And just to make sure those other lights are not doing anything, I'm just going to delete them. Yep, so it didn't change the lighting on him at all. He still have these double shadows. And so we can also change the way this lighting plays out on the surface by rotating this um, image-based lighting around. So if I move this around, you, you can see how the shadows are changing on the surface. And it's getting a little crash, crashy feeling. So now we're putting that big bright light sort of more in front of him now and so more light is being cast onto the surface so this is a great way to put a lot of interesting light in the scene and make sort of realistic looking right lighting and, and uh, like I say rich shadows or sorry rich shadows and rich colors on uh, a local color so again if you want to render this without this appearing in the background now, if you go into the alpha channel, it does appear. So that whole thing is being rendered into the background. So it's all white right now. So that whole image is filling up our scene. And a lot of the time, you don't want that. So if I turn this off, then the effect of the light is felt on the model. But it actually doesn't render into the background. And if we go into alpha channel here, you can see we just have a nice clean alpha around here, which means in After Effects or whatever your compositing um, software is, you can place this in the scene and the background will show up. Similarly, if you don't want this to affect something like diffuse, this guy only has diffuse, so nothing will render. If you wanted to not affect specular or subsurface scattering or so on, then you can turn those off. So, for example, subsurface scattering is a render intensive thing, but if you want to do something like wax or jade or skin, something where light transmits into an object, bounces around, and comes back out, um, it can be a great effect, but it can be expensive in terms of render time. Um, and if you have a complex lighting system like this HDR image um, being cast onto your object, the render time can go way up. So you may want to turn off uh, the influence of this light onto subsurface scattering to control how it influences your rendering. Okay, so uh, just one last thing. Um, depending on what type of probe was used to create this HDR image, whether and how it was it spread out into 2D, you might have to change from latitude longitude to mirrored ball. Actually, this one might, maybe it might, it may, no, see mirrored ball looks weird. Um, this one must be lat long. Yeah, so lat long makes it look correct in the background. So if it looks strange, you might have to change the format to lat long, angular, or mirrored ball. So you can experiment with those. At any rate, there you go. That's the uh, Sky Dome light. In Arnold 5, it does the job of the environmental background sky shader, as well as lighting the scene. Um, so you can use an HDR image, but you don't have to. Uh, if I wanted to break the connection between the color and the HDR image, I can just right click on the attribute name, break connection, and if I give it some color, then we'll just go back to that plain white shading. Okay, uh, next we'll look at render said no, next we'll look at shaders.